Hey guys, Casey here from startscreenprintingnow.com. Today I'm going to show you how to make your own exposure unit for burning screens. But instead of doing it the more traditional way, um, I'm going to do more like a projector style exposure unit. Most DIY exposure units would be something simple with a screen and then your light source hanging above it, shining directly down at the screen. Or it might be something like a regular, like a professional exposure unit where the screen would be sitting on a, a pane of glass and your light source would be underneath, exposing the screen from the bottom. But with a projector style exposure unit, our screen will be mounted on the wall and our, our light source will be pointed at the screen and be hanging from the ceiling like this. So what's the benefit of doing it this way? Well, I've mentioned before that uh, space in my garage is a premium and I'm wanting to not take up too much space my wife still doesn't think having a print shop in the garage is a good idea because she still wants to use the garage. So what a better way to take up less floor space than by having most of it mounted on the wall and the ceiling. For this build, I'll be using this Home Depot uh, portable work light that I got. It's a 500 watt halogen bulb. I also grabbed these garage door rear track hanger kits. This is the same stuff that's holding up the track my garage door is on. And this is the same thing that's gonna be coming down from the ceiling and it's gonna hold this light sword. Now this whole setup costs around $50. Uh, this light was $20. The, this, this track, garage track was $20. And again, a couple other things that I got for around six to $10. So let's get started. I start off by attaching the two longest pieces of the garage hanging kit, hoping that it'll come down far enough so that it'll be about halfway down the wall. This will be the piece that comes down from the ceiling and holds the light. Now I have an extra long piece to hang from the ceiling. This is the work light I'm using. I'm going to be removing the base which will allow me to attach it to the bracket. There are two holes that line up perfectly with the bracket and allow me to screw it into place. And here's the area where I'll be hanging it up. I already have a UV safe yellow light hanging from the ceiling so that I won't prematurely expose my screens. Here you can see the garage door bracket that's already holding up my garage door. And this is what we're gonna be mimicking. Next, I grabbed a stud finding tool and, no, 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 no. I'm not doing that joke. I'm not, I'm not doing it. Next, I grabbed a stud finder and found the studs in the ceiling. I pre-drilled holes into the studs for the bracket. Once it was on the ceiling, I measured about 15 or 16 inches away from the wall so I could see where to mount the bracket that would hold the work light. After filming this, I did have to move it back about two or three notches just because it got a little bit close to the wall when I mounted the work light. This crossbar would hold it steady and hold the extra weight. Next I took the base off the bottom of the work light and used that to attach it to the bracket.
Once I plugged it in and turned it on, I did notice that this front piece on the work light was uh, blocking a lot of my light. I also removed the glass from the light because typically these have a UV filter on them and will kind of uh, ruin my chances of burning my screen. So make sure you remove the glass on any light you get for yourself. I wanted to place my screen on the wall so I grabbed one of these garage utility hooks. I marked on my wall where my screen would be centered with my light. Please note that your exposure time will depend largely on the light source that you're using and the emulsion. So check and see if there's a spec sheet that came with your emulsion that will give you an idea of what time to use. You can also search online for a free exposure calculator. This will be a piece of film that you can put on your screen and it'll help you hone in your times and really get the calculations right. You can see without the front cover it throws out a lot more light. Since we'll be shooting light directly at our screen, some light will pass through the screen, hit the white wall behind it, and bounce back at the screen the other way. This will kind of scatter the light and make our image not quite as accurate. So what you want to do is place a, something like a black cloth against your wall, something that will absorb the light, keep it from bouncing off the wall and back at your screen. I've simply hung up a black cloth against my wall. Once you've coated both sides of your screen with emulsion and let that dry, you'll tape your film to your screen and get ready for the next step. Now most DIY exposure unit videos, you would uh, take something like a pane of glass and you would drop that onto your film that's on your screen. This is going to use gravity to push your artwork flat against your screen so that there's no no space in between your design and the screen. There's no room for uh, any light to get, get between there and kind of blur your details of your image. If you have a nice professional exposure unit, you would place your screen down on the glass. A vacuum top would come down like this and suction down on your screen, pressing it against the glass while your, your light source exposed the screen underneath and that vacuum top would also do the same thing. It would suck your film against the screen and make sure that your details come out nice and clear. But since we have a vertical exposure unit, we can't really just put some glass on there. Well, here's where having a huge brain came in handy. I'll be taking one of these vacuum space saving bags. These are usually for putting your clothes in and hanging in your closet for storage. I'll be putting my screen in here sucking all the air out and it'll suck the image against our screen and get a nice clear image. Just open the bag. Oh, and be mindful, there's a lot of print and instructions on one side of the bag. The other side has nothing on it. Make sure your image is facing the side that has nothing printed on the bag or else all these instructions will be burned onto your screen. And I just got this at Walmart. It was like, uh, I think $6. Don't get a huge bag. Try and get one that's closer to the size of your screen. I can store like 12 cats in here. Okay. And I'm just going to be using this household um, vacuum cleaner. I had an extra one because we replaced this one a while ago because this one was terrible. So when I get to, ready to suck the air out of this bag, I also think that it's a good idea, maybe something like a straw or a tube, take it, put it in the bag, right near the little vacuum hole, put it in the bag next to the vacuum hole. The bag tends to like suck in on itself and it'll kind of seal up that vacuum hole right away instead of sucking out all the air from the bag first. Let's close that up like a Ziploc bag. Like I'm putting 12 cats in it. Take the hose from the vacuum cleaner, put it up to the hole, and start on sucking. I put the vacuum cleaner on the ground and start on sucking. I turned this vacuum cleaner on for the first time in about four years. It literally sprayed hamster shit all over my garage. Don't even ask.
All right. Now, our image is very tight against the screen. It's squeezed on there. All the air is taken out. Since my vacuum bag was so oversized, I did have to put an alligator clip on the wall, clip it to the bag so that it wouldn't fall over. <laughs> all right. Thanks guys. That's all we have for today. If you like this project, go ahead and like the video. If you want to see more projects like this, go ahead and subscribe. If you hated the video, go ahead and like it and subscribe. That'll definitely throw me off and confuse me. I've also set up a Patreon page if you'd like to support the channel. Uh, check out the link in the description below. Proceeds from the Patreon page will go to help buy more supplies to help make more of these DIY videos. It'll help me buy more screen printing supplies um, that I can review for you guys and uh, give more tutorial videos. It helps me uh, really crank up more videos. Of course, there's no obligation to support me on Patreon. If you can spare a couple bucks every month, then thank you so much for your generosity. If you can't, I totally understand. Thank you so much for watching the channel anyway. I love all you guys. Oh yeah, and happy printing. See you next time.